I firmly believe that talking about music doesn't really make any sense unless you listen to it first. So come on and I'll show you some examples of compression. So what I want you to listen for in this first example is how I say a sentence with a lot of dynamics or a lot of changes in my volume, but after we compress it, everything becomes a similar sound because it flattens out those changes in volume. I'm the optimal choice for this job, and you know it. I'm the optimal choice for this job, and you know it. In the next example, I say a percussive word, and I add reverb, or space to it. Briefly, reverb is what I fondly call the singing in the shower effect. You'll know what I mean when you hear it. Naturally, the volume of that reverb decreases with time, but listen to how when we compress it, those changes in volume are flattened. Ouch! Ouch! So basically what's happening is, you have an audio waveform, right? And what you're doing is, is you're taking that waveform and you're putting a ceiling and you're pushing that ceiling down, 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 and you're squashing the top end or the loudest bits of that audio waveform, kind of like that. Another way to think about it that I actually prefer is I like to think of the audio waveform as a mountain range with peaks and valleys of all different sizes. Now imagine the sky is falling down and cutting off the tops of those mountains as it descends. That's what compression is. So now you have this mountain range or audio waveform that's shorter or quieter than it was before. And so what you do is you raise the volume of the whole thing or the height of the whole thing such that the average loudness of the audio waveform was the same as before. That's called makeup gain. And what you end up with is a sound where everything's more even and you can hear everything better. This makeup game process is why when you compress something, often the most noticeable change is how much the quiet bits get louder, even though technically we're working with the loudest bits. Let's listen to those examples again and see if you can hear how the bottom bits get louder. In this first example, this time listen to how the phrase, for this job, gets louder. I'm the optimal choice for this job, and you know it. I'm the optimal choice for this job, and you know it. In the second example, this time, listen to how those reverberations are brought up and get louder. Ouch! Ouch! Compression is used on literally everything. Try listening to the beginning and then the climax of a lot of pop songs. The tone of their voice tricks us, but really the singers stay at a pretty similar volume so that we can hear them over the band the whole time. And also so they don't murder our ears when we're wearing headphones. I mean, look at this. It's so typical of me to talk about myself, I'm sorry. So here she's sitting around like negative 10, negative 11 maybe, but like pretty consistently around here, right? Now look at this. So here she's at negative seven, negative eight, and she is shouting. A four decibel difference, and she is shout! Even my voice on this video is compressed so that you can hear what I'm saying. Mumbler! I hope after watching this, you can notice this tool being used all around you. 